Today's book is Froggy Goes to Grandma's. Froggy woke up and bounced on his bed. Boing, 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 yippee! He sang, "We are going to Grandma's," and he jumped off. Wee! And got dressed. Zip, zoop, zup, zat, 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 zat. Froggy called his mother. What? It's time to pack for our trip, dear. I already did, he said. Then he flopped into the kitchen. Flop, 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 and ate his breakfast of cereal and flies. Munch, crunch, munch. Then off to the taxi they went. Flop, flop. First they took the a plane. Zoom. Then they went by taxi again. Beep beep. I can't wait to see Grandma cook. Cried Froggy. He called her Grandma Cook because she was the best cook in the world. When they finally got to Grandma's, he cried, "Grandma, Grandma, Grandma Cook!" And he leap frogged over Dad. And he leap frogged over Mom. And he leap frogged over Polly Wogglina, and almost knocked Grandma down. Whoa! cried Grandma Cook. You're too big to catch Muffin. But you're just the right size for a great big hug. On their first day at Grandma's, they went to the museum. Now remember, Muffin, no yelling and bouncing around," said Grandma. "Look," yelled Froggy, bouncing over to a painting. "It's the famous, the famous Frog Alisa." By Leonardo da Piggy. Froggy called Grandma. What? Don't touch it! But he was already racing to a statue of an alligator named the Thinker. Look! Yelled Froggy, and he sat with his chin on his fist, and he said, "I'm thinking. I think." I think you stink," said Polly, giggling. "We don't say stink," said Grandma. "We say smell." P U," said Polly, holding her nose. The next day, they went to a baseball game. "Yippee!" said Froggy. "Yippee!" cried Froggy. Just then, the batter hit a pop-up whack, and the ball sailed up, up. Up! It's mine!" cried Froggy, and he leapfrogged over Grandma, leapfrogged over the dugout, he leapfrogged over the catcher, and caught it in his baseball cap. "Got it!" cried Froggy. Then he put his cap back on, with the ball still in it. Boink! And knocked himself down. "Out!" cried the ump. Oops," said Froggy. The next night, they went to an、um, to, to the amusement park. Grandma didn't like high places, but Froggy said, "Come on, Grandma! It's easy as it's as easy as falling off a log." They went on a water slide called the Logger's Revenge. But when they got to the top, Grandma threw up her hands and yelled, "Wee!" And Froggy yelled, "Yikes!" Looking greener than normal. And on the day after that, Grandma took them bowling, her favorite sport. First up, Grandma bowled the bowled the ball strike. Next, Polly pushed the ball. It rolled slowly. Slowly, and came to a stop against the front pin. Strike! Yelled Polly. Now it was Froggy's turn. 
Watch this! cried Froggy, and he threw the ball with all his might. But his fingers got stuck and flew with the ball and flew with the ball. Yikes! Thump! Oops! said Froggy. Good try, said Grandma. But the best day of all was the last day. Grandma Cook was going to cook. I want to help, said Froggy. Then Froggy stood on a chair and helped her stir the sauce. And he sang, "Swirly, girly, swirly, splash!" Now it's time to boil the spaghetti," said Grandma. "I'll open it," said Froggy. And he was so excited, he tore open the box. Rip! Spaghetti flew everywhere and rained down on Polly's head. Wah! Wailed Froggy. Oops! Said Froggy, looking more red in the face than green. But soon Grandma Cook served her famous pasta frogganese, otherwise known as spaghetti with fly sauce. And Froggy and Polly chewed down. Yum! cried Froggy. You're the best Grandma ever. Slurp, slurp. Slurp. The end. What is your favorite part of the story? My favorite part of the story is where they went on the log roller coaster. Zoom! Froggy goes to the library. It was Saturday morning, and Froggy stayed in bed. To read his favorite book, it was about Super Frog. Froggy called his ma- mom. What? It's time to get up, dear. We have to go to the library. Yippee! cried Froggy, and he hopped out of bed and flopped to the kitchen. Flop, flop, flop. Let's go! said Froggy, and he started flopping out the door. Flop, flop, flop. First, said Mom, you have to get dressed. I know that, said Froggy. It doesn't look like he knows that. And he flopped back to his room, and he got dressed. Zip, 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 zut, 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 zat. Then he flopped back, flop, 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 and said, "Let's go." I want to get books about Super Frog and T Rex, but first, eat your breakfast, dear. Yum," said Froggy. "Home flies and ketchup, munch, crunch, munch." Then Froggy raced out the door. Froggy called his mother. What? Don't forget your book bag, dear, so you can carry home lots of books. I'd better take the wheelbarrow," cried Froggy. "I'm getting tons of books." And off they, and off to the library they went. Squeak, squeak, squeak. In no time at all, Froggy had a stack of books so high they couldn't see over the top. So he tripped over Polly. Oops! And fell smack on his face. Splat! And spilled. All his books, and that's when he saw Froggelina. Hi, Froggy. Hehe. <laughs> Want some help picking up your books? I can do it myself," shouted Froggy. "Please use your indoor voice, dear," said the librarian, Miss Otterbottom. First, Froggy read a book about Super Frog. He wasn't very good at reading, but he was very good at looking at the pictures. Zwit zwit! When he got to the part about Super Frog flying high and fast after bad guys, he stood on the table and spread his arms like wings. Please sit down, dear," said Miss Otterbottom. "It's not polite to stand on a table." Oops," said Froggy. Then he picked up lots of books about dinosaurs, especially his favorite, T. Rex. Roar! cried Froggy, holding his hands up like claws. Froggy 
called Mr. O- called Miss Otterbottom. What? This is a library, dear, not a dinosaur park. Oops, said Froggy. Sorry. Then Miss Otterbottom announced, "Story time! Come gather around, children." Me, me! cried Polly Wogglina. Story time is for babies," said Froggy. But little by little, the book that Miss Otterbottom was reading got all of his attention. What a great story! Thought Froggy, and he wanted to know what happened next. So he scooted closer and closer. And when he started doing rhymes and songs, he got so excited that he leapfrogged over Frogalina. He leapfrogged over his mother and leapfrogged over Polly, and right smack beside Miss Otterbottom and started singing: Wiggle, wiggle, waggle, waggle, giggle, giggle, gaggle, gaggle. All the kids laughed like crazy, and Froggy kept singing and dancing. Until suddenly, it grew quiet. So quiet, you could hear a fly burp. Burp. Froggy took one look and Miss Otterbottom, and uh oh, he knew he was in trouble. Oops! cried Froggy, looking more red in the face than green. Miss Otterbottom stared at him hard, then smiled and joined in, and so did everybody else. Wiggle, wiggle, waggle, waggle, giggle, giggle, gaggle, gaggle, until story time was over. Thanks for being so、uh, energetic, Froggy," said Miss Otterbottom, and she handed him a book that she had been reading aloud and said, "I'm glad I know that Froggy loves books. Come again soon." Thanks," cried Froggy. "Books are the best." Then he put it on top of his pile to check out. Then rolled his wheelbarrow full of books with Polly on the top singing, "Wiggle, wiggle, waggle, waggle, giggle, giggle, gaggle, gaggle," all the way home. Squeak, squeak, squeak. The end. What is your favorite part of the story? My favorite part of the story is where Froggy leapfrogged over Froggina, leapfrogged over his mom, and leapfrogged over Polly. And started singing, wiggle, wiggle, waggle, waggle, giggle, giggle, gaggle, gaggle. Try say the, try saying that three times fast. It's a really, it's really a tongue twister. Wiggle, wiggle, waggle, waggle, giggle, giggle, waggle, waggle. This book is Froggy picks a pumpkin. Welcome, pickers. At school, Froggy read a poster. Don't forget, trip to the pumpkin patch. Trip to the pumpkin patch tomorrow. Pumpkin picking contest. Next morning, Froggy woke up and looked out the window. A beautiful pumpkin moon was setting, and colorful leaves were falling. Leaves, leaves! cried Froggy. I want to go out and play in the. Oops. He fell out of bed. Thump. Froggy called his mother. What? Stop jumping off the bed, dear. Today's your field trip. Oh yeah! cried Froggy. It's time to pick a pumpkin. And he hopped up and got dressed. Zip, zoop, zap, 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 zap. And walked into the kitchen, flop, 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 singing pumpkins, puffin, pumpkins, pumpkins, muffin and pie, pumpkin faces lighting the sky. He ate his breakfast of cereal and flies, munch, crunch, munch, and imagined a steaming pumpkin pie, yum, and the whole line of jack o' lanterns outside lighting the night sky. On the school bus, Froggy bounced in his seat. Boing, 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 and led all his friends singing, pumpkins, pumpkins, muffin and pie, muffins and pie, pumpkin faces lighting the sky. When they got to the pumpkin patch, he jumped off the bus, flop, 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 
and sing. I'm gonna pick a pumpkin. I'm gonna pick a pumpkin. Froggy, called the teacher, Miss Witherspoon. What? Wait, dear. We're gonna have a pumpkin picking contest for the biggest, smallest, prettiest, ugliest, and the best all-around pumpkin. Yippee! cried Froggy, and he took off again. Flop, flop, flop. And tripped over a pumpkin, flew through the air, and knocked into another pumpkin. Bonk! Max bounced over three small pumpkins and tried to pick up a huge one. It didn't budge. Ugh! Trevor said, "Step aside," and lifted it up. Matthew zigged around Max, Trevor, and Froggy and picked up the prettiest pumpkin in the world. Was shiny and perfect and just the right size. Ragolina toiled and danced through the pumpkin patch, then squatted down and said, "Hello, my sweet," and picked up one small, very dark orange pumpkin and kissed it. Smooch. Froggy hopped up on a gigantic pumpkin and looked all around, like a pirate on the bow of a ship, and shouted, "Ahoy there!" He leapfrogged over Frogalina. He leapfrogged over Max. He leapfrogged over Matthew. Flop, 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 and fell smack across a really big pumpkin. He stood up and said, "This is the one." And he tried to pick it up. He got up, it up to his knees. Huff. He got up to his chest. Yes. He chugged along. Then he. Then he struggled along with his huge pumpkin. Log, log, ugh! Froggy called Miss Miss Witherspoon. What? You're going you're going the wrong way. Oops! Said Froggy and started huffing. Max yelled, "Last one is a rotten egg!" Everyone else ran at their pumpkins, and Travis rolled his big one. Rumble, rumble, rumble. When Froggy finally got there, he was too pop to pop. He tried to s- and trip and smash his pumpkin. Smoosh! Oops! Cried Froggy, looking more red in the face than green. Everybody laughed, even Miss Witherspoon. Then she said, "And now for the winners of the pumpkin picking contest: for the biggest, Travis; for the smallest, Max." Max lifted his hat, and there, on top of his head, was a pumpkin the size of a golf ball. For the prettiest, Matthew, and for the best all around, Frogalina. Here's the pie pumpkin, great for baking. Frogalina said, "Hello, my sweet," and kissed it. Smooch. Then Miss Witherspoon said, "And for the ugliest, yours, Froggy. What a mess!" And everyone cheered, "Hip hip hooray!" Even Froggy. And on the bus ride home, Froggy sang, "Pumpkins, pumpkins, muffin and pie, pumpkin faces lighting the sky." And all his friends sang with him. The end. What is your favorite part of the story? My favorite part of the story is where Froggy fell down on the pumpkin and made into a big mess. Oh, 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 oh,